Hello again. See, we are getting more and more. We are now 20 participants. That's a good number. Right. Jessica, um, I think we have a good number to start now. You think we can start? It's now about uh, six past two o'clock. All right. Karibu Nyote, Watuwa Amiran. Nice to have you today in my session, session two. My name is Nancy Mutonyi. I'm your today's uh, course leader but I'm also your host for now until our, our host from Acurex comes and join in. She's held up somewhere in a very pressing matter, but she'll be with us shortly. But all the same, we can start because uh, everything starts and ends with me and you, isn't it? So um, without waiting much time, I'll just give an intro of myself. You can all see me and hear me clearly. Okay. All right, yeah, so I'm a trainer with uh, Acurex every now and then. I train in some particular areas of customer service, in sales and marketing, and also operations management. Uh, before then, I have been in the industry for a long time. I have done some sales and marketing in, uh, in fast moving consumer goods. I've been in customer service as a head of customer service and also operations management where I have been uh, very active in areas of um, inventory management and logistics and planning. So for today, I think uh, I know we've had one training last week on Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yes, this week on Tuesday, and I was, it was quite lively. So I look forward to having more to the same, same energy. Uh, okay, so, so I will just begin by introducing the topic for today, and um, I will have some time for discussion in groups. I'll pause here and there for a Q&A if anybody has a question to ask me, but I think we'll have a good afternoon for two hours. All right, so I'll share my screen now for what I prepared for you. There we go. Is it visible? You can all see my screen. Somebody can unmute and say yes. Okay. So I'm assuming we are all in the sales department, having seen this topic that you have chosen. And I would like us to just go through a few things that are a bit basic, but it's good to begin from there, just to see why you chose this uh, topic <clears throat> on customer retention. A very, very key thing because uh, you can get customers very easily, but retaining can be quite a challenge. And it's good to just focus and see how we can find new ways or different ways and bring someone how we can retain them. Because if you don't work on that, you will lose them. So just in a glance, let's just look at um, some areas here. If I ask you what a customer is, of course, you'll all tell me who they are because you know them, you can define them in your own language. But um, I just want to add here and say that a customer is somebody you know who comes to you and depends on you for some service. There's something he comes to you for, and that's something we want to call it value. They find something of value with you. They can buy goods or a service, but the big thing that they come to you for is they find value. And value is what they define as what they find as important. Uh, customers define value or perceive value in their own terms because sometimes you can see one product, one client will see one value. Somebody else will see something else as a different value. So whatever they see as value is what you want to work on to retain them as your customer. So they come across this value and express the value as they interact with you every now and then as they buy, as they talk to you, they are finding that of value in your service or your product. So let's start by understanding who you serve, who is your customer, who is the one you provide a value to, or who comes to you for value. And you can find two, two categories of customers. Number one, you have the external one, the one you serve outside the organization. That's the one I'm sure most of you are focusing on, those who come open accounts with you, or you supply them goods or services. 
And then you have those who are internal. There are some customers who are internally with you and you have no idea they are. They can be colleagues at the departments, but they come to you for a value. For example, let's say you're an ICT department and they who come to you because they require ICT as a service in maintenance or a software, those are your customers. But for you in sales, you could be having two. You could be having internal, somebody who depends on you for some value. Maybe somebody in customer service department who requires some info from you. But mostly in sales, we look at those who are external, those who we serve. So the first thing is but just define who is your customer. Who do you serve or who depends on you for, for value or service? All right, then you ask yourself, what value do you provide each of these customer categories, internal and external? What is this value? You can find the value maybe in a service or in the product you sell to them. I know you have many, many items you sell. I found very many of them on your website, but those are products, yes, but what is the value they have that attaches them to that product? Why should they come to you as Amiran and not somebody else in the same same sector or the industry, and that is what you want to grab on, yeah? And then once you know what they come to you as value, and how do you know it is a big value for them? How do you rate the value that you provide in that product or in that category of items, yeah? How can you tell that you're continuously providing value for your customer? Because to retain the customer, you need to think about that because no one just comes to you because they want to come to you. There is something they are finding in the value of the organization, your product portfolio, or your service, or something about you. Now, how can you tell? This is not all of you question. How can you tell that you are continuously providing value for your customer? Kindly unmute. You know, let's talk now. It's a big question. I want to ask all of you. It's open. If you want to know what you're giving your customer is of value or they value it, how do you tell? Usually or moving forward, anybody? Hello? Let's talk to each other. Anybody to answer this question, to attend the question? Thank you, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. This is Lillian. Yes, Lillian. Uh, when he comes back to you uh, several times, then you know you're actually giving him. There's a value that he needs in you. When he comes back to you, continue to buy, to buy continuously, repeat sales. Of course, like as it's product. So for you, for us, when he comes to buy several times. Okay, that's one way. Any other way? But before he comes back, mm -hmm. yeah. How can you tell? Because you don't want to say they'll come back, you know, they came back last month, again this month. What if in between there, there's a lapse? How do you know? That is one way, it's a good way, but how else can you tell? Say it again, sorry. How else can you tell that you're giving him value before he even comes back? <laughs> That's a good answer. Anybody else? Or Lynn can continue. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Okay. It's good to just understand that it's good to find out from them where you are rating in terms of value provision. And there are many ways. One, as we heard from Ali, that it is good to know if it comes back to you again and buys continuously, but also it's good to capture the voice of the customer, something that you need to do. As you interact with them on a daily basis or whatever you do, it's good to engage them and understand what they feel about your service or your product or your entire what you provide for them, to know if it's of value for them. And one way we say this is just having a, a short, very, very brief way of capturing his voice or his feedback, not a questionnaire as such. I know you have those kind of things you have. You have a survey you give clients every now and then, but you can do something more brief and more captivating that can give you a face-to-face -face or maybe a phone, a phone call feedback very, very quickly by asking about five or the very most six questions, very, very few questions. And normally what I know is that if you give customers a questionnaire in survey form in writing, 
they don't respond. They don't even like seeing them. They have no time. But he asked them, can I have just about five minutes of your time? Just ask you a few things. I want to know where we are in value service vision. I can help you improve my service. If they hear that you care about them and how they feel about your service, they will allow you and they will talk. So face-to-face, -face, if you feel, go to get the, where they were or where they are, or a phone call, ask at least these five I've got for you here. The first one you can ask, what do you value most about our service? These are all open questions, okay? Everything is open because you want to hear. They have to tell you what is in their heart. So ask them, what do you value most about our service or about our company or about our products? Yeah, and then let them talk. They'll tell you what it is because value from one to the other are so different and you realize that out of 10 customers, they're so different in the things they find or value in your service or your product. Then ask them, what else is important when we serve you? Because we have given you that thing of value, what else can we do to make it more valuable or to add more value, yeah? And they'll tell you what you can add, you know? You can improve on this or add this or do this and just let them talk back and take notes. Number four, ask them, what could we do that could create even more value for you, all right? Again here, you want to understand how else can you augment or improve or add more so they can keep coming to you and you alone and stay with you, yeah? Number four, you can ask, what could we do that you would gladly pay more for our service? Some clients don't mind paying a bit more for something extra because they know it'll cost you a bit more. They don't mind paying a bit more. So one will ask them, what can you pay? And they'll tell you if they have something they can think of that they can gladly pay for your service. And then five, you can ask, what should we stop doing or start doing or do more or less to serve you better? Those are like four in one question, yeah? Some things they think you should stop doing. Yeah, they'll tell you what that is. That's not very key for them. Or start doing. It could be one or two things. Or do more of one thing or less. Because sometimes we think clients want all these things, you know, like now they come to your office and they want coffee, they want cappuccino and all that. Some don't even care, they just want what they come for. So it's good to just know why do they care, what do they care about very much. And also ask them, what could you cause you to leave us and go to another organization? This is the last one now because you want to know why they would leave you. What is not of value to them in your organization, in your services, they will tell you. These being open questions, you'll find various answers and various responses. Take them seriously and work on them because again, here we saw customer value is very, very different, but you find some more common elements as you analyze your answers. But of course, say it's about you and your customer. Customer A, B, and C, they're all different. So focus on that customer that you have asked these questions and how they will be served. But this is not something you want to go and give them in a paper and say, I'll come and pick it later. This is something you ask face-to-face -face or just a phone call, yeah? Ask them for their time to just give you a few feedbacks. And that way, you can do it every, every three or four months, you know, every now and then, and see where you are in your value provision and if you're giving them value. Okay? Is that okay? Any question? Or something to add? Hello. I hope it's clear. Okay, let's just go on a bit and see something else here. Now, we are all somebody's customer somewhere out there, isn't it? We all have uh, places we go for service. And there are many, we go to banks, we go to hairdressers and barbers. So you're somebody's customer, isn't it? That we agree, yeah? Now, you find value in this place you go to, your banker, your kiosk, mobile provider, there's something of value you find there. So for now, we'll do a small group uh, role play based on these six, um, six areas I have asked here as questions and see how, how they respond. So I want it to be in two people, two people in a group, two of each, and then you choose one of these particular providers of service here. It can be a hair salon or a barber or a bank. 
And then one of you can be the client and one can be the provider of the service. Just ask the five questions here and see how they respond. Then we can discuss them and we come back. Is that okay? So I don't know how many you are and where you are. Do you have a partner or you are alone? Or do you require to go into some groups? Hello, Lillian. Sorry, um, Jessica. Jessica? Yes. Sir. Are we in uh, are we in groups where we are? Are we alone? Or can we have pairs of two people? No one is in person. We're all separate. You're all apart. Yeah. Okay. So I can put you in some groups. Uh, let me find the breakout rooms here. Um, I'm trying to, so it's a simple role play to just see, um, you know, how this can work out when you go back to your clients. I'm trying to find the breakout rooms. So I'll put you in a group of two and you agree who will be the customer and who will be there. Who will be the the right over the service? So I'll put you. We are how many are we? We are thirty. In fifteen groups. In about ten or so minutes, please. Then we can uh, come back. And let's ask each other those five questions. Um, all right.
Cognitive speaker. It's not clear. Yes. I'm chatting on the questions there. Eh? I'm adding the questions on the chat. Can you see them? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you say questions? Yeah. Hey, you? you can yeah. see that on the chat, the chat has the questions. Maybe you can tell me the question. Huh? Yeah, on the chat. Open the chat. <laughs> So, you the questions and let's Hello. 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 I'm <laughs> 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 Hello, I started. last time Ebu mute ndio usengenya watu.
eh, wakurugenzi ya mjambo Hatu jambo eh, hapa ni group tu kama nini mimi ndio nimeingia saa hii I can't see anything going on. What's happening? I'm, I'm not even sure. I've actually, I've actually just joined. So I'm assuming to make a group and we are supposed to discuss. Hello, something. I'm also yeah. not understanding. The, the rooms have been, the rooms were assigned. People like the groups now doing some work. No, there, there's no group. Is working. Sorry? No group is working. I, I, I've invited you to come and help me. You are not coming. I sent the, the questions in the chat. Where? Where? <laughs> the chat, the chat box. What? The chat. The, the, go to the chat. That's where you chat. Where has been a chat, Bama? Chat, you can't be saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to see you up on the other side. I'm going to right. Okay, hello. <laughs> okay, my chat. Uh, chat yeah. We are all back now. Did anyone do anything? Did you find a question in the chat that I said? Chat, yangu mimi na onyesha empty. Even me, I don't have the questions in the chat. You didn't find in the chat? No question, I'm not saying. Okay. No question, I'm not saying. I am doing on a kind of chat. Where are the questions? Did anyone see the question and attend any? Yeah, we have seen it now. Oh, no, no, you can see the question. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the question. You couldn't see them earlier? No, we didn't. We ended next. Okay. Did anyone manage to do anything? Let's see what has happened so far. I think there's somebody who needs to mute. Uh... Somebody please mute. Somebody please mute yourself unless you're talking. Hello. It's Johnson. Okay, Johnson, please mute yourself. I can't even see. Okay, so welcome back. I'm sorry some could not see the chat earlier, but did anyone see it and have a discussion? Anybody, any two people who saw it and uh, did something on the questions? Let's hear some feedback. I think uh, there are no questions displayed right now. I think uh, you've uh, deleted them something. No, the, the chat box, okay. Yeah. Ideally, that was supposed to help us just understand how you can ask these questions in a different uh, sector to just understand how customers can respond back to them. Huh. Yeah? And maybe you can just carry them with you. When you go back to your offices, you can have a discussion with your clients yeah. and then see how the feedback comes through. But they're very, very, they're very brief to the point. They will tell you everything that a customer values about your service. And once you capture their voice, you can know how to influence or retain them. Sawa, sawa. Uh. Okay, let's continue. Anything to ask on that so far? Let's continue then. All right, so something else you can do. <clears throat> is try understanding the customer's journey or the experience as they come interacting with you. As you sell to them, as you serve them, it's good to just have an idea of what they experience at every level of your service. We call this as customer experience mapping because clients come to us and they have a different experience at different times at every point of our service and those we call a service transaction. For example, anybody who's on, please meet yourselves. You know, please, please, please mute yourself. So I was just saying here that um, when customers come to us at different levels for different um, 
service as a transaction on phone, it could be on physical or at their shop where you are or at their offices, they experience your service or your transaction in a different way. They make opinions on your transactions. So we call this a customer or client experience mapping where you want to just wear their shoes for a while and go from point to point and see how they experience your service. Can you all see my screen? All right. Ideally here, what you want to do is like map out the journey they go through the beginning to the end. From the first point they come across, it could be a phone call, how the phone was. Somebody is not muted. It's a living stone, Wachira. Okay, I'm muting you. Yeah, so I was saying, so have an honest um, walk through the experience or let somebody else in a different department or somebody else, a different section, come and wear the shoes of a, a customer and just experience and give you an honest opinion of every experience. Normally we do, we do a, a chat like this, something like this. Huh? You cannot see that, like a round figure. You can see it? Okay. You will see the beginning here. There's an S that says the S is for start, and it goes all the way around. There are different points to the very, very end here with an arrow saying finish. You can actually map an experience no matter how long or short it could be a phone call, it could be a, a something you're doing for the customer, a document you do for the customer, or even a sales transaction or a meeting you've had. them to remain with you and retain them yeah now here we talk about all the impressions there's a first impression and the last impression the first impression is very 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 important because it makes a lasting impression it's what they see first it's what they experience first it could be by sight or by hearing or by just perceiving it so if you make a positive first impression you'll be able to influence them If you're at a counter or a sales office, it's what they see, the environment, how they perceive it. It could be a body language also, the way you are seated, the way you welcome them, and the way you are, the gestures you provide. And even uh, elements like voice on telephone can tell them the first impression is a good one, they are welcoming me, they're eager to speak to me. So whatever it is as a first impression, think about your transaction, where you are and what you do for the client. What is the first impression? Is it positive? Is it, uh, is it welcoming? Yeah. And then all the other impressions, all the other points, maybe now the meeting. And how, fast they, and how fast is it responding? Is it fast responding fast, timely? Do I get a feedback saying how long I'll wait? I can say for the first impression there, I'll say yes, it is fast. It is communicating, it's showing me where they are. And then number two, maybe I'll say, maybe the cab driver will call me and say he's on the way or text me and say he's coming or he's just silent. Okay. So moving forward, number three uh, or four, arrival time. If it's say three minutes, is it here in three minutes or longer? If it's on time, I'll be happy and I'll say it's a good rating. And then I look at the cab, it has arrived. How does it look like? Is it clean? Is it Uh, 
happy. And you can even rate from one to five. Three or two, all right? So one is not good, two is average for <clears throat> the driver is you know is he pleasant is he welcoming is he wearing his mask is he looking clean is he smelling fresh those are all judgment points the number seven you can say the choice of route if i want to go to cbd and where i am is maybe on the highway is he using the fastest route to get me there faster or he wants to go in the traffic areas does he have an app that tells him where traffic jam is high either the g map and also the driving skills. I can actually um, assess his driving skills. Is he careless? Is he fast? Is he reckless? Yeah. Then I get to my point of destination. Um, how do we part? Is he, you know, does he drop in a safe place where he drops me? Am I safe? Or is there a traffic and I be, can I, and I can hit me or so? Then also the payment, payment mode. Is there a choice of payment? Can I pay by M-Pesa or he wants cash? So all those are points of experience. And that's the last point. And then, ha and then he goes and I'm arriving at my point. So a simple taxi ride can actually give you, as a customer, a way of being able to, um, to experience and even to rate that service. And this goes for anything you do. Whether do not okay so ask yourself what am i rating low which areas for my transaction am i rating very very low okay then you say point one or two or three or even the first or the last impression then ask yourself how can i improve it do i require it's just about my own efforts to improve do i require my boss to help me or a colleague to also uh, improve? Do I require another approval? Maybe it requires even a budget, you know, maybe it requires some money to do something and improvement somewhere. So get to understand what needs to be done and how to approach it and don't delay. What can be improved by yourself immediately at that point, improve. It could be your own, you know, persona, your own body language, or the way you receive people, or your voice tone, or your time management, it could be something that you'll find that has not been very, very well taken care, taken care of that you can improve. If it requires your senior's approval, you get approval, if you need to have some more chairs to improve your chair or to get housekeeping done better, or maybe water for the clients, whatever they are, work on them because they do make an impression. And those small, small things sometimes we neglect create an impression and clients are like, no, uh, these people are not serious about this. So it's a good place to start, and that's another way of getting to know if you're giving value to your customer and uh, maybe how you can improve. Yeah. Any question? Is it clear? On this second point? Anybody can unmute and just tell me it's clear. Can it work? Is it practical? Or do I call names? Kara Barasa is with us. Kara, unmute, please. Kara Barasa. Yes, clear. Clear. Is it practical? Hello, Carol. Uh, just a minute, I can hear you, just a minute, please. Are you, are you in sales, in field sales, or what is your area of sales? Uh, more customer service at the call center. Customer service. 
Yes. How do you, how do you, uh, is it more phone calls or face to face? More of phone calls and uh, now, and partially in cells when maybe um, relieving someone. Okay. So on phone also, customers can judge your, their experience with you, isn't it? Yeah. From how you receive the yes, phone call, sure. how you respond to their queries or how you give them feedback. So all those areas, customers do make impressions. So it cannot, don't say it's a phone call only, but they do. So whatever small thing you're doing, phone call, face-to-face, -face, doing a proposal. So all those areas should be taken care of and you can actually assess every point and see where you're falling short and improve. So ideally you want to be at least above three, above good. Eh? If you're in a good place, Make it better, at least step and say very good or even excellent. So just try and step up in every place you are. If you're rating low on average, you need to do some more work and try and see what can I do on myself by my own or as a group or requires approval and get that done because it might reduce your customer retention. Sawa, so please, that will be your homework when you get back to your offices and let's see how that comes out eventually. We'll discuss later. All right. Something else you can do for retaining your customer is how you have your customer service attitude. It's about you. How do you view your customer? How do you serve your customer? What kind of attitude do you serve your customer with? You know, are you a positive attitude? Are you helpful? Do you have a can-do attitude? Do you want to support and inspire your customer? Are you proactive? Do you think ahead? Appreciative and respectful as a team player? Do you have compassion? Do you care for the customers that you want to help them? Do you put them first? Because sometimes clients come to us and we are busy. Do you stop what you're doing and show that you're important, even that phone call? So all these things reflect as your customer size attitude because they, they show in the way you serve your customers, you know, the way you speak, the way you respond to them. And they will tell, you are there to serve them and you care for them just by your attitude. So whatever you do for the customer, whatever you're doing, customer service or even selling to them in the field, you must project a positive customer service attitude at all times. So think about it. How do I respond? You know, Do I respect their time? Do I respond to their queries, respond uh, in a short while? Am I able to share more of my time with them and go the extra mile? You know. Am I proactive? Am I appreciative? Do I say thank you and welcome back or something? And also show that you're eager to serve and to learn and to grow with them. These elements show in the way you serve them. Your attitude is very, very key. That's something else you can do to retain your customer and find out more about how much value they place in you. It's about you for you, Carol, or for Lillian, or whoever you are. It's up to you to say, hey, I'm going to go and serve my clients. I will show attentiveness. I will show empathy. I will show attention. I'll go the extra mile. You know, I'll be on time. So all those reflect as you serve them, and they will see. And ideally here, you want to have a trust-based place where you can have a, your client can trust you and know that they're taken care of if they come to you as Amiran, or as, you know, the salesperson. Because they want to feel that they can trust and depend on you to provide for them value, and this is about you and how you respond. You could be the leader in the market in all the good things, but if the people there are not helping and not serving in attitude positively, there will be a problem, okay? So ask yourself also, what areas must I change in my attitude, yeah? Or the way I am? And they start in small, small things, yeah? Let's start with you as a person, the persona who you are. What can you improve? Talk about yourself, personal grooming, you know, the way you look, the way you appear to the clients who come to you. Your hair, your nails, you know, your hygiene, the way you are, because those can be the first impression for a customer, yeah? For a gentleman, of course, we always say, have a short haircut, neat, you know, short nails, and of course, you want to have hygiene around you. Ladies, for hairstyles, make it simple and relevant, you know. Nails, if you're facing customers, you always say, have a neutral or nude nail color, if you must have color, 
They must be well, you know, well trimmed. Makeup should be not as loud. It should just be enough not to distract because ideally here you want to keep them focused on what they're here for the value. So too much makeup or too much hair color and all that can distract the customer, right? Now dress code. Most uh, companies now have a dress code. I think for field people, they have, uh, maybe they have uh, this and you can wear a logo, logo wear. Those help because you have one unified way of looking. But whatever it is of dress code, it's good to have it well cleaned and well pressed every time, you know? Shoes are clean, even if in the field, have a shoe brush somewhere in your car or somewhere. If you're wearing like accessories for ladies, you know, keep it simple, not too loud, just keep it simple and nice looking. You know, not too many loud rings, just make it simple, you know what I mean by that. It's good to have a name tag if you're serving clients so they can call you by name and it shows you care and they can call you on who you are, you know, or a card, calling card when you go out. Then of course, the element of hygiene is very, very key here. Sometimes in the field, we go out, it's very, very hot, yeah, it gets hot. Have a deal spray for just some freshness, yeah. If you've had lunch, in Machoma somewhere, oral hygiene is very, very key, you know. Have some mint to freshen your breath. If you had some onion, kachumbari, just good breath is enough, it's good for you. So some things are just about what they see. And they can make a judgment about you. They make the judge and say, this person is coming, mm, I'm not so sure. Yeah, does that make sense? Straightforward? It sounds simple, but it's very, very, very important you look how you look at a customer. All right, number two is about communication skills and how you communicate, very, very important, right? Now, customers care that you are attentive to them, right? Because we always say, as they talk to you, either face-to-face -face or on phone, you need to show some active listening skills. Yes, you can hear them. They can see you, you're hearing what they're saying, but are you hearing the actual message? Are you showing them that you're listening? in terms of body language, you know, like if you're with them face to face, yeah? Are you nodding? Are you, are you agreeing? Are you gesturing? Do you have good eye contact that shows you're attentive? Or do you look away, yeah? Again here, body language, you know? How are you standing or sitting, you know? We always say, look like you're attentively standing and you listen to well. Don't cross your arms, avoid loops to guess just because they show that you're not with them. Stand straight with your arms on your side. Don't cross your arms. And of course, always keep a good distance between you and the client, you know, don't get into their face. It's a good distance between the two of you. And if you're on phone, you can make some cues. Yes, I hear you. I understand. Don't just leave a blank sound, nothing is going on. Let them hear that you're on that side, like, yes, I understand. So that is what is called active listening. So they can see that you're hearing and you care about what they're saying. Number two, be empathetic and show concern for what their needs are, you know? Understand what they're asking for, show need for, you know, you're, you're feeling their pain, yeah? Show concern by the things you say to them, yeah? I hear you, I understand, yeah? I am sorry for that has happened, so, those are the kind of things you can say to show empathy and that you care for what they're going through if they have an issue, for example. And as they are talking to you, let them talk. Let them just, don't interject them. Focus on what they are saying and let them just talk, whether it's on the phone or face to face. They first finish. Then you can clarify and say, did you say this? Did I hear you say this? Or please repeat what you asked. Or it's good to ask because sometimes you can hear one thing, but they meant something else. Maybe something in between that got interrupted, but it's good to clarify what they are saying if you didn't hear very, very well, so you can respond correctly. Because once you clarify, then you can respond correctly, accurately, with authentic information. There's nothing as bad that a customer will see as not giving me the right info. As for this, I'm getting something else because you never clarified. So here communicates very, very key because they need you to understand where they are and, you, and to uh, respond accurately authentically with what they need. Because that is a very, very big part of um, customer retention, you know, communication. And also, if you're responding back, respond back in time. Timely response. If you say, give me half an hour, please make it half an hour. If it expires and there's no response, 
call and say, I'm still following up your issue. Can I get back to you? Or if you're writing, please respond the emails. We'll discuss that later. So communicating effectively about active listening, yeah, showing empathy, and, and, and of course, engaging the body. And authentically, in time. Those are key elements of customer retention, very, very key. All right? But sometimes we find some barriers to communication because sometimes we think we're communicating, but there's some barriers that come between us and the client that we should resolve at the earliest possible. And one big barrier, uh, barrier that clients find is industry jargon. Yeah? They come to us and ask some questions, and we are there giving them phrases and our own industry jargon, you know, things that they don't understand, but only you know. Yeah? Do you have any industry jargon among yourselves at Amiran? I'm sure you do. Any examples? Let's hear some examples of your industry jargon. Some phrases that you normally have or some acronyms you have there that only you know. Anybody? Celestine? Celestine? Yes. yes. Yeah, so what is the industry jargon you have there? Some words that you have at Amiran yes. that only you understand, but clients don't understand them. Any examples? Like our trade name, product trade names, for instance, the TOG product range. So I could say TOG 75 or TOG 6, and maybe it's one of those clients who is not fully aware of what is happening in the industry and might not know what exactly that stands for. Yes. Those are the things we call industry job, but they don't care about those things. They want to hear exactly what does that mean. If you say P45, what is that? Put it down for them and tell them it is this product that does this for you. So that is for you because you know what that means there. Don't share that with them. They get very, very bothered by that. Okay. Tim has raised your hand, Tim. Yes, Tim. Uh, for like in our sector, uh, the active ingredients of uh, pesticides are not uh, known so much by our farmers, especially. Yeah. in the agribusiness or small scale uh, segment. So in most cases, they will know or use your product based on the brand name. But uh, if you go with uh, the active, like fossil aluminum, mectin, they might not understand actually what you are talking about. So if you give a product by brand name and what it does and the rate, that would be enough. But if you get deeper to you know, the active ingredient and uh, melt of action, most of them, especially the small scale farmers might fail to understand. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so here we are saying, make it simple, okay? Let's say what it is. Is it fertilizer? Is it an anti-spread for what? Uh, it's intersect for what? Just tell them exactly what they want to hear because not all understand your jargon. Those who do, it's okay, but mostly just make it simple. Don't make any assumptions there. Eh? It puts them off sometimes. Number two, other barriers are cultural barriers, yeah, in terms of taboos or different religious political prejudices there. So don't, uh, if you find, like for example, somebody you find is um, maybe a religious person, he's dressed up in religious clothes at all, and uh, you know, he then shake women's hands, for example. Respect that, respect those boundaries, yeah. There are those who have a different, you know, boundary around them. Respect all those in terms of culture, a taboo, a religion, you know, and you will see by the way they are, by the way they, you know, the way they appear. So all those. Number three, sometimes it's just noise, distractions, physical noise. Yeah, between you and the phone call, is some noise somewhere, traffic somewhere or outside, and sometimes it's psychological noise. Yeah, you know what that is. Psychological noise, yeah? Things you're carrying around with you, things you came from home or from outside with you. Uh, Johnson Mwangi. Johnson Mwangi with us? Yes, yeah, I am.
things you've come from home with or from outside with that can distract your communication? Hello, Johnson. Yes. Do you agree with me that sometimes we have distractions in terms of psychological noises, in terms of what you're carrying in your mind psychologically that can distract you from communicating with the customer? Yes, yes, I can agree with you. Okay, so what do you do about that? What should you do? What should we do? You should leave them where they, they belong, okay? Yes. So if you have something that bugs you in your mind from home or from the field or somewhere, leave it there. When it comes to the client and you, you should be free. Communicate without any barrier of the mind, all right? It's what you want to do here. So enter the office or the client's office, put things away. You'll find them there later and deal with them later. Another kind of barrier is a language barrier in terms of unfamiliar accents, you know. There are some who can understand some accents or poor choice of words or phrases. If somebody is not able to speak your speak English, maybe you can help them into Swahili or what they understand, or someone to help them translate to their language so they can understand what you're telling them. So always understand that some accents are very, very hard to find. Like uh, sometimes Chinese are very difficult to understand when it comes to speaking English. So maybe sometimes you can slow down, explain simply, use simple language, and just be very, very, very basic. And other barriers are physical barriers that are nonverbal in terms of your body language. As you said earlier, your language of your body can actually obstruct communication, yeah? You can be saying something with your mouth, but your language of the body is very, very different, yeah? It's a barrier. It's very, very non-reactive, communicates. You're close up, you're not there with them. You know, the way you're sitting, or maybe you're, uh, you're there on the laptop on your phone, when you get a client on your phone like this, of course, that's a barrier because you see, I can hear what you're saying, but please, you know, no attention here at all. So be very careful how you're gesturing, your body language, how you present yourself. It presents a communicative barrier or, 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 a, or a positive. So those are things you must look at because they actually do uh, deter client influence on, 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 communic on, uh, on retention. So other things you can do here in, in communicating face-to-face, -face, for example, yeah, is of course I said face to face is posture, eye contact, you know, so you're listening and look at the person as you talk to them, smile, gesture. If it's a handshake, you can shake nicely and firmly, not limp. Uh, the voice tone can tell somebody you're communicating with them. It's not too loud, not shouting, of course, not too fast, very clear in the words you're using. Use polite and positive words, avoid profane or negative words, okay? And again, of course, we said grooming is very, very key. And look like you're there to serve them in just the way you look on the outside, right? Let's look at how other elements uh, come in in real communication. Now, when it comes to writing communication here, we have different ways of how we write to customers. We have things we give them like maybe memos or quotations or letters. Um, look at how you have formatted your presentation, your emails, yeah? Do you have letterheads at your office that say we are Imran, this is who we are, where we are located? Your logos are there and very, very clear. And how you format your email is very, very, also very, very important because sometimes we just write emails and we don't even sign off. Let's say, for example, I'm Nancy Mutoni, I'm in sales department, is my contact and my email in case they want to follow up with me. So sign off with a full address of who you are and where you are, how they can find you they can do a follow-up on you. The style of writing, you know, the way you, the words you use, are they casual? Yeah, they should show you are there to serve them, yeah? The speed of responding to emails for communication should be very, very well kept. An email should not take more than one day before it's opened or replied to, at least 24 hours or even 12 hours. Once you receive, respond and say, I received your email, I'll communicate in due course, but do not keep quiet. Please respond and follow up. Even the color you use and the font size you use, the graphics, simple Romans 12 is a, is a good number. It's very well understood. So present it very, very, very well and clearly. Telephone, again here, voice of tone. Somebody can tell your, your mood by hearing your voice, your voice tone. They can tell you're happy, 
you are not happy, they can tell you're smiling, you're grumpy, you don't feel like talking just by the way you say the first word, hello. So we always say, smile to yourself as you say good morning or that first word, hello, how are you? Just cause a smile to relax your mind and cause your vocal sound to come out easily and smoothly to show attention and you're here to serve them. And also, kindly don't just say hello, say good morning. My name is Nancy, how can I help you today, you know? That's how you salute somebody who's calling you for business. Don't just say hello, good morning, I'm Ran. Just give them your name and that shows you're prepared to receive their call and communication. If you're transferring calls, please tell them I'm going to transfer you to so-and-so in this department, please hold on and transfer them. If it takes long to transfer or they can't pick it up, say, I cannot find this person, please leave a message. Can I ask them to call you back or something? But don't leave somebody on hold for too long. Let them know what's going on because that's time. That's the time they're spending, okay? And how do you end the call? Again, here, yeah, thank you for calling Amiran. Yeah. Can I help you with anything else? Yeah. Please call me back and have a nice day. Sign off, and in case they have something that they want to ask more, let them ask. And always, we say here, wait for the caller or the client to hang up first. Don't be the first to hang up. Why do we say that? Why must they be the first to hang up? Anybody? Reason? Please talk to me, somebody. Why must I call a hang up first? Could it be a sign of respect? Yes. And what else? Yeah. And, what and also, and, 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 and also maybe had forgotten to ask something. So, yes. Because you are serving the client. Yes. So it could be a sign of respect, or maybe he's forgotten to ask something and then. Oh. That is it's not true. good manners well, to hang the phone before the client. <laughs> and then you hang up and it's it's gone, isn't it? You must call again. So something can be in his mind, and just before you say, you know, have a nice day, it appears, and then he can tell you. It could be another order he forgot or a query or some comments he wanted. So let them first hang up, yeah, and then you can hang up. Very, very important. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Mobile phones, of course, are the ones you're using right now. If somebody call, a client calls you and you can't answer, please respond. We have auto messages saying, please, I'll call you back in a meeting, respond. Please do respond to a missed call. Don't just let it just ring. You can just put and say responding to auto message. I'll call you back later. I'm in a meeting, but it is not very polite to customers to call and miss your call and you're just quiet, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you're texting, Use the correct grammar, write full sentences, avoid short messaging like TH or TN for things. Make it look serious and professional, please. Grammar, the tone of the voice in the text, yeah? Respectful words again, all right? Any queries so far? Before I close this topic, we're running out of time. Shall I continue? Something else you can do here is to manage your customer expectations because they have things they expect from you. You must manage their expectations. That's where you can be able to retain your client. Now, these are what they perceive as benefits and outcomes from you, your company, and your product. And they expect different things. Everybody has something else that they expect from you. So understand what are they expecting from you to serve them better, okay? And why must you do this? To maintain a high level of customer delight or customer service, because you manage what they expect well enough, they will come back to you and remain with you and be loyal. And of course, we we're saying earlier, you get more repeat sales and new sales and you retain them. Yeah. But can you always meet everybody's expectation, all of them? Is it possible to meet all your clients? There could be 50 or 30. Is it possible to do that? With all the expectations of the customers. It's not possible. So what do we do? Who said not possible? Hello? Somebody was saying not possible? That's true, you cannot, they can't, it's very, very hard. But there's something you can do to do that because at the very beginning of your 
engagement is good to place some some um to agree on some things because you need to agree on what you can deliver and what you cannot deliver so they can know what to expect to what level and how far can they expect this to be done so we always say the first thing you must do is have a full disclosure be very very honest of what you can deliver in terms of the scope quantity quality availability and what you cannot because sometimes we want to, to give so much and sometimes we don't even have all that to give. This is what we provide in terms of product range in our services, what we can go beyond here and what we cannot give. Let them know that at the very onset. It's very, very good to be honest because if you're honest about that, they know what to, to expect. Number two, set very clear goals and expectations. Agree on the objects of what they want and what you can deliver. Yeah? This is what you just to do for you. We can do this so we can achieve this result. We can supply this kind of seed for this. It will give you this result, okay? Very, very clear. This is what you can give. Here are the results. Number three, anticipate some possible expectations, yeah? If, for example, you're giving um, uh, an, uh, a service like maybe irrigation schemes or maybe a warehouse, are they called, no, they're called what? Those houses, um, greenhouses, for example. What else might they expect you to give them? Either along with that product or that service, then you can provide because they might ask for it and you don't want to lose them, yeah? If you can offer them that extra service, let them know, we can offer you this with that, yeah? If you give you a greenhouse, can give you with maybe something like maybe lighting and all that. So think ahead because clients always want to expect more. They want to ask for more. They ask you for a hand, they want an arm. That's how they think. They want more. Yeah. If you can deliver more, do that. Yeah. Don't make any assumptions. Number four, very, very, very important. Yeah. Don't assume that they know what you're saying unless it's on paper or you didn't say it clearly. So always put everything on paper in writing. Yeah correctly and accurately, this is our service, what we can do in what time, this is what we charge for this and that. We do not do this. This is valid for only this period. So be very clear about what you're delivering because if you assume they know, they will expect that you're doing it, yeah? And then lastly, continuously communicate and follow up with them, update them all the time on what is going on, on something new, a deviation in the service. If you have a stock take weekend, say we're having a stock take weekend on the next weekend, please give your orders early, prepare them early in advance. Or we're having a late delivery this evening because of a breakdown, please communicate. Or we have stock out of these items for the next one week or two weeks, they should be coming by the next one week, please communicate because they're expecting you to deliver that thing you promised them in time on this day. But if something goes wrong, because things do go wrong, it's a very perfect world we live in, Sometimes things are missing, out of stock, delivery is late, let them know. Communicate and let them know because they get angry when you commit on something they expect you to do for them and you can't deliver. But they come and see a big sign there, close for stock take, and one told them. These are a few ways you can do to manage their expectations because there are very, very many of them. This will help you, all right? And then lastly, Build on how you relate with your customers, you know. Be creative about you now, be creative, yeah. You know your clients very, very well. For the last one year, you do them by name, who they are, what they do, yeah. So observe simple things, of course, like body language, express concern, understand the time period of serving them, think ahead, and also develop a way of asking them these five things we asked earlier. How can I help you better? How can I add more value for you, yeah? And go out and develop something friendly with them. Maybe you know their birthday. Tell them, but birthday my customer, you know? Maybe the wife got a, a child. How is the baby doing? So find a way of relating with them that only you can uniquely find creatively to connect with them. Yeah, in a good way that's friendly, but of course respectful. Yeah. Wish them Merry Christmas. If they have Eid, happy Eid. Yeah. And show them you're always there. Call them, ask them, how is that, uh, how is that product behaving? Are you happy with the service? Are you happy with this? Uh, just find how you can make them delighted, delight, the, delight them very, very highly. And that way they can come back to you and remain with you. Any question on the first topic? Running out of time very, very fast. 
Is that helpful what I've shared, those few tips? Hello? Yes, very important. Yes. So find and also be creative because you know your client base very well, you know your product. Find other ways that only you is uniquely understanding your client to make them remain with you and be happy. If they're happy with you and you're they find the value in what you're giving them, they will stay. And we always say the one who's happy will bring somebody else and somebody else and they'll grow your business. So with those few tips, I think we can go to the next topic. If there are no questions, any questions on the first topic on customer retention? And how to win and influence them? Silence means we are happy. All right, let's continue with our next subtopic about product knowledge. A very, very, very uh, deep topic here. Uh, but we can't Nancy, go. I see there's a question uh, by Vincent. Vincent, okay. Hello, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can, can hear you. you. Yeah, on the customer retention question, I needed to ask, uh, does uh, location and uh, time allocated for every client uh, have a barrier on effective communication? Meaning that, uh, <clears throat> let's say a client gives you a limited time that uh, in the next few minutes or in the next few hours, I'm supposed to enter into a meeting and you only have a limited minute of, uh, let's say 30 minutes or maybe an hour. Uh, how do you go about it? How do you make him come down and then you deliver what you have to deliver or maybe talk to him through what you have to talk to him through? And also the location, maybe it's a, is it in an office, out in the field, or uh, maybe out in a cafe? Does it affect uh, your, your, your presentation to the client and what you want to, do, to, to portray to him? Maybe you can uh, catch on one or two or three things of that. Okay, when you say the time set, who has set the time? Is it the client's time or your time? Whose time is this? Uh, this I'll say the client's time, not you, but the, the client's, client's time. For you. Yeah. Okay, like maybe he's, he only has like 10 minutes for the discussion and you require more time? Exactly. Okay, um, as you're setting this first meeting with a client, uh, he knows what you're coming to present to him, isn't it? Yep. It's a new, it's a new product you're discussing with him or a quote, and uh, you're trying to get the best time, the best um, quality time for him to listen to you and respond positively. What you can do maybe at the beginning is tell him I require about maybe half an hour, or when can I come? We talk for half an hour, or when you have like 45 minutes to discuss blah 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 this item here because you want to find him when the time is not rushed, he's not in a rush to go anywhere, or he's not very engaged, but let him tell you the best time. But if you just walk in, I hope you don't want to just walk in, don't just walk in and say, I have this to give you, and he says, I only have 10 minutes. So find a time when he can hear you. If not, you can begin the conversation and then say, can I come back to discuss Slightly, but it's best to begin by discussing it before you get there. Let him know it will take about half an hour. Does he have the half an hour? Does he have it today or tomorrow? Because you don't want to rush him through and then lose it. Yeah, in between there. Yeah, is that okay? Um, Does that that's help? Fine. That's fine. But before then, prior, it's good to get to prepare him for how long it will take or what you're going to present. Then he can now tell you, not today, today I'm very busy, I don't have much time, maybe about 10 or something, but come tomorrow at this time. Yes, it's very, very important. Then again, location, you want to find a place where you don't have all these barriers I discussed earlier. You know, there's not much noise interruptions, you know, a place where you can be just you and him, peacefully talking, where you can engage, you can present to him, you can ask his questions without people coming to ask him to sign things at all. If he's a, he's a kind of person who's always very, very busy, take him away somewhere, you know, tell him, look, can we go somewhere and have some tea or coffee? Or does he have a place for meeting, a meeting room somewhere? Or do you have a place at your place of work where you can come and have a discussion with you? Because sometimes it's good to bring them out of the environment where they are because you know they have interruptions. 
So it's up to you to know your client, know where he is and what you're presenting to him and you require no barriers. So you must think and say, he needs to be at his office, his counter, his shop, yeah? Take him away because him, he wants to be where he wants to be. It's up to you to deal with the noise he has around him, but always try and find a place where there are no barriers. So take the initiative and do it yourself as a salesperson. It's important for you because it's up to you to get the gains, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Is that clear? Yes. All right. Any more questions? Nancy, uh, Nancy thank you. It's Lillian. Yes, could I say what, could I just reinforce with what um, Vincent has said? Yeah. Uh, it, all, also, it also depends on how, how your relationship is with the client. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, we are actually in the same uh, department with him and what he's going, what he's uh, actually mentioned is something that we normally experience. Yeah. Um, how I go about it is how 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 I build my relationship with my client. Yeah. Because some would tell you that yes, Lillian, you have an appointment. Let's say, for example, tomorrow at ten, but mm -hmm. I have let's say a bank meeting at around. He had actually sorry. He had actually uh, given an appointment of ten o'clock, for example, tomorrow. Yeah. But then. Um, he was expecting, or uh, he, was, he was expecting an, an urgent meeting with the bank, but they didn't confirm the time. So yeah. if, if you actually have a good relationship with him, he actually call you back and tell you that, uh, yes, uh, I know you want to come and see me, and we have this lengthy thing to discuss, or we have this project to discuss. Uh, I'll only give you 30 minutes, or I'll only give you 10 minutes, or or can we meet maybe the following day? Let's say maybe it was on Monday. Can we meet on Tuesday or Wednesday? Yes. So it all depends with how, how, how you build up your relationship with your client. It's true. That he can tell you that he's not, uh, today he's not available or the time that he had allowed you to give is not possible. It's true. Yeah. Engage him and uh, understand his position as well. Thank you, Lillian. Okay, Vincent, you're fine. Any more hands? Any more, Purity? Anybody else? Uh, none I can see at the moment. Or in the chat? Nothing yet. Okay. Wow, our time is running out very fast. Two hours are very short. So let's look at our second topic that's on product knowledge. Very, very key. Um, topic that nobody would know. But uh, just briefly saying, of course, you know what products are. It's what contributes to features, functions, and benefits that can be applied for as an exchange. So clients come to you with all those needs. They can come to you, they want to buy those products because they look at the attributes and what benefits they have in them. And they are whole range, I'm sure you have them there at Amran. So ideally here, for you, the salesperson, or you, the person in charge, you must understand what you are selling or what you're providing, not just knowing the product, but everything about it. What is the benefit of this product? What does it serve us? Who needs this product? And for what purpose and when, you know? And also know what else is available in the market, in the industry that tries to come close to my, my product, right? Now, for every, we always say every company has something called a primary product. That are the, that's what they sell or what they provide as a service or a product. Those are tangible sometimes. It could be a brand or a service, but that's where they exist. Why they're there as Amiran is because they are selling this product portfolio, right? And that is what now we have been saying earlier customers come to you because they find value in those products or in those items. Yeah. So, for example, what is Amiran's primary product? What do you sell mainly? What are you known for? If I say like that, HP is known for the computer hardware. What is Amiran known for? Primary product. Anybody? In a general term. Anybody? Primary product for Amiran, what is it? Should I call names again? Agricultural products, that's what we offer. Okay, so those are known to be the Amiran products, yeah? and there are a range of them. 
So what are the key attributes of this product that, that customers find value? And do you meet the need of the customer value? What's uniquely about, what is so unique about I mean, product that you can say we can find ourselves because we know our product very, very well. We are known for this unique element, this unique attribute as I mean, product. What is that? What makes you stand out from the rest of them? Drips and greenhouses. Sorry? Drips and greenhouses. Drips and greenhouses, okay. So once you have, yes, we have said that. Now, what about your drips and greenhouses is so unique that nobody else has that attribute? Are there others who say the same thing as you in the industry? Greenhouses? I yes, think. but we stand by quality. Quality, you say quality. Okay, when you say quality, expand quality on of that. our product. Sorry, quality, quality of our product. Okay. Can you expand on that unique attribute about that quality? Expand more. If I give you an example, um, discuss quality of Amiran products. Um, uh, world world, uh, we actually know the agricultural products uh, or agricultural uh, countries normally Israel. So th this has been um, a selling, a selling, a selling, I'll call it a selling word for us because most of our suppliers are from, uh, from Israel. So they are known, Israel's are known actually for very, having very good products from, for agriculture. Okay. But now for me as a client, if you say quality, what is my benefit? Because you want to translate that attribute quality into a benefit for the customer to, to buy. Understand, okay. Yeah, it's diff it differs. If I take, for example, uh, I'm doing a lot of greenhouse plastic. Uh, what stands out for me compared with other competitors is that um, one is the thickness, which is still stands in uh, quality and durability of the plastic, the greenhouse plastic. And the properties that uh, uh, properties that, it, that are actually inbuilt in this greenhouse plastic that are actually beneficial to the to the crop. Okay, so it's more it's more technical. Okay, so you know your product has high quality. That's the first attribute, very unique. Eh? In yes. terms of durability, you said, and uh, what else? You said two things. And properties, because. <laughs> And properties, yeah. yes, my dear. You are plastic is taking four years. The competition is taking two years. That's what he said. Uh, durability. Okay. Nancy Again. said durability. Yes. Nancy said durability. So translate that to me as a client who wants to buy a greenhouse and I've come to Amazon. Why must I buy yours and not the other guys out there? So that you buying. You, you're buying mine, sorry, you, you, you're buying mine, one, because of uh, durability that Polly and yourself has actually mentioned. Uh, I know you want me to take me to pricing. Our prices are not good. Uh, no. We have, uh, <laughs> our prices are not good. <laughs> They're not good. We, we, we are in Mercedes-Benz Volvo kind of uh, <laughs> pricing. No, <laughs> and, um, and yeah. and we have something and we have something that is called properties you know for the for the because i'm selling to a grower i'm not selling to an end user i'm selling i'm, I'm selling to a grower who's actually growing the crop to sell okay. to an end user mm -hmm. so for him for this grower I would actually look at what 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 makes what makes apart from durability and 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 and, and, and thickness what makes it different from 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 nancy's product then yes. I'll say, okay, fine. I have property A that will give you one, two, three uh, for the benefit of the crop. I have property B that will prevent you from uh, things like um, uh, uh, pest management. So all this is what actually will make will make my client buy from me. Okay. Are those yes. common things with other greenhouses? These are greenhouse plastic, Nancy. So we have structure and we have plastic. Okay, okay. So yeah. Understand what is my selling? I can't hear you well. I can't hear you. Hello? 
Hello? Uh, we are losing you, Nancy. Oh, yes. okay. Sorry. Am I there now? Much yes. better. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so ideally here is finding the unique attribute or attributes. Sometimes it could be fewer or more that is uniquely you that will make somebody come from somewhere else to come to you. So once you know that attribute and you know it so well and you can stand by it, you can translate that to a benefit, okay? And here, you know that somebody else has the same, same thing, but you want to pick on that particular thing and take it to the client and say, it will help you in this and that and that and that. So before that, of course, you must know what the customer needs. So fill all the gaps with that attribute or attributes that you have. So you must know your, your, your client, number one, very, very well. Number two, understand your product very well with all that few, one or two very, very unique attributes. And it could be anything. As you said, quality, you know, you said durability. It could even be a packaging, uh, the, the packaging that you offer. It's safer, it can be recycled, for example. Things like safety, it can be used by it's very safely to not harm you as you apply it or as you're handling it. Convenient, it could be anything at all. And here we say, don't just look at what is there, but think deeper, look through what else do I have here? So it means that you as a salesperson must have initiative and go through and understand and learn and even try and even use it. Maybe sometimes we say, yeah, interact deeper with that product. Because sometimes we say, I have my spec sheet here. I know this product very well, one, two, three, four, check. But there's more because you don't just sell the same, same things. There are other guys that are selling greenhouses, I'm sure, and driven all that. But why must they come to you? What is the value they find in you? That's what you must find in the long and short of it. Understand that very, very clearly. Yeah. Um, I want to just show you a picture here. This, can you see this, this uh, slide here? These are butter. Yeah. Something we all use once in a while when you have bread. When you go to buy butter, you'll find a lot of bridges of butter and they're all the same thing. They're made from dairy, they have been weighed, they have been skimmed, and they're all butter for bread. But why should I buy Lupa butter from Kate's butter? Is because they have a different attribute that I'm looking for as a customer that I'll find. And it could be a simple thing like maybe the packaging can be recycled against other Paper, paper, paper bound packages, yeah? Mm. Or it has salt, it has sea salt. So it's always good to see, it could just be one salient feature or even two of them. And they could be right there gazing at you. The packaging, or even the way they display their value of, of nutrition. You know, we have said that we have energy level of this much, proteins this much. So what can it, that can sell beyond that packaging? That maybe tells a customer it's a bit safe to use or how to handle the product is like this, like that. It has less of all these chemicals. So those are things that you must very, very, very much engage yourself in understanding and they can sell for you. Yeah? Yes. Let's go to price. Just somebody has talked about price just now. Why are you saying that your price is not good? Is it Lillian? Yes. <laughs> Why are you saying your price is not good? What's wrong with the price? Uh, because sometimes you people compare the, okay like if you go to buy if you go to the supermarket and you want to buy an example of cooking oil we have elianto we have fresh fries or soap for example we have uh, sunlight we have areas we have uh, omo so they're from different companies yes but uh, you don't want to say oh it's uh, it's it, 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 it's soap Mm. It's um, it's soap or it's it, it's uh, oil, so then you look at the pricing. Sometimes most customers we look at the pricing. I look at the pricing when I go to the supermarket for sure. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. looking at what 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 ingre ingredients does that particular product has, yeah. But price is something that yes we look at. But for us, uh, as Amiran, yes, price is an issue. We are not we are not fifty percent expensive than. Um, than uh, the competitors, but we say uh, for the for the service we are giving you, uh, it comes with a price. 
just like if you walk into a motor shop and you want to buy um, a Toyota and somebody has a Volvo, it's totally different. See, mm -hmm. they are all cars, but now what, 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 what details are you looking at? So that is why we are not, we are not, <laughs> we are not uh, good in pricing. <laughs> I can get you, you don't yourself with your price. Imagine Lillian, after yes, saying all yes. the good things about your product, the quality, the durability, that should reflect in what? The price, isn't it? Mm. You must stand by your price, but your price reflects quality, value. Yes. 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 Tell them I'm not like others who give you a lower price because they yes. have not put enough. But if you know yes. you're those things in terms of all those unique attributes, you can stand by your price and say, this is my price. And if I say it's too expensive, you can tell me what? That is what value mm -hmm. is because of what I'm giving you in any random range of maybe a greenhouse or dripping. It is not like anybody else's. I can stand by the, the heritage of this product, the quality and the inputs I've gone in here are high quality to give you the customer the best service, and you go on. When it comes to pricing discussion, Lillian and everybody else, yes. don't get stuck and say, yeah, we expect to just get confusion like that. No. You go back and do what? You pump on this attributes that are unique, not like other guys, yeah? Talk about all those, the safety issues, the content, you know, the quality of the seed, all that. You work on that and you stand by it. Do not let this lose you a sale. And I've seen most sales people do that. And they say everything about our, and like price is expensive. Yeah, you know, but you know, we can discuss a discount. No, don't give a discount. You stand by it and sell the attributes. Are you hearing me? Because this is a very big element of product knowledge, yeah? Mm. Yes, yes. Together. Stand for your price and what it reflects and all you have put in it. And clients will watch you because they, the, the same price they watch and see are they going to bend over and give you something better, different price? Because they have been out there looking for other prices, other products they have seen, you know, the, the whole bunch of things that we get saying. The price compared to these guys is, is not the same. It's, I want I want a discount of this much. You're too expensive. You stand by it. Let him argue anything else, but the price is your price. And as Amiran, you said you're the leading in, uh, you know, I think in quality, there's, a, there's somebody who does a pricing for you based on the costs, of the inputs mm -hmm. and everything there. That price is not expensive. It stands for what you're providing. Again, here I'll say value. What I will say value. I'm giving you value, not just a greenhouse, it's value. Yeah. So don't shy away. Are you getting me, Lillian, and the rest? Yes. And the client who comes to you, they will know you are the Mercedes range in that in that sector. So they expect to find the best and they'll pay for it. So please do not say we're not very good in pricing. It is very well priced. It is worth it. You will be happy with our product and assure them that. Sawa. Yes. Yeah. Sawa, thanks. Sawa, yeah. thanks. A very big element of product is about pricing and understanding how the pricing relates to the unique attributes. Not just at, but unique attributes that are basically just yours. Nobody else has them. Yeah. Then you can talk about delivery system. Where are they found? You know, where can I find these valuable products? Are they in a kiosk? Are they accessible? You know, can you deliver them to me? Can I find them in any other dealer shop? Is there a branch where I am? So all those come together to give you the price, not the product knowledge. Yeah, where they are found, how they delivered, at what fee. And also, how do you present to your customers? How do you, how do you communicate what you have to your clients? Is there a website? Do you have advertisement? Do you have internet? Do you have e-commerce? Yeah. So all those things should be understood as a package wrapped and a better value. And also, understanding your competition. Who is there trying to compete with you? Are they giving value for value? Are they comparing oranges with apples? Or apples with apples? Again, here. Are they comparing you, you Amiran, with other guys in the Joakali because they are cheaper and they are said they have a greenhouse? Are you the apple or you're the orange? Amiran. Are you the apple or the oranges? Someone please tell me. 
Are you the benchmark or the substitute? Anybody? Yeah, the benchmark, the benchmark of course. You're the benchmark, yeah? So you're the apple. Of course. Of course. Apple, of course. Don't let anybody compare you an orange to an apple. You say we are the top of the range. We are the, high, we are the highest quality provider. We are showing you all these market leaders. Use all those words because you know you are. And if you show confidence in your product, by the way, you will get the customers you need. They'll come to you. Sawa. Yes. So don't be like this. Don't be like Pepsi and Coke. Who is the benchmark there? Who is the apple? Coke. In these two, Coke. So don't say we are Pepsi, but we are like Coke. No, you are not. Coke is Coke. They're number one. They have more value. Or let's say Toyota and Mazda. I don't know. They look like they're the same. But who's <laughs> the benchmark? <laughs> I'll just bring this to and preach a lot because she knows I get confused. Toyota and Mazda, who's the benchmark? Mazda. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Samsung and LG screens, mm -hmm. they look the same, same picture. Who's the benchmark? Again, there you can argue. Mm. Then you have Huawei and Oppo and Samsung. Then you have German and Swiss watches. Who's the benchmark? Swiss watch against German watches. Who's the benchmark? Anybody, even Purity can answer. <laughs> I think it's it's Swiss. Swiss. But... <laughs> yes, what we know, it is Swiss, but Germans are coming very, very fast to try and benchmark. So mm -hmm. be careful. Be knowing who is trying to come, who is behind you, who's trying to catch up with you. Watch what they're doing and stay ahead of them. All right? Yes. Sour. So now I went to your website and I found some lovely products here of entire range. I found Fruit fly control, I found a, what are they called? Irrigation, I found a seed range. Are they still part of your product? Are they still there? This fertilizer, I found Riaya fertilizer, I found this. So out of all these products here, I want to believe you know them well, you know the unique attributes and how they can benefit your client that nobody else can and how to stand by the price. Because if you don't know, somebody else can use your weakness to spoil for you. Mm. You understand? So know everything, the face value, the, the top range, whatever it is, the quality, understand the ingredients and where they come from, how they are done, understand the entire structure, and you can stand by it. And they say the price is too high, you tell them, because I told you we are this, we are that, we use this. And this is not just once, it's continuously learning. Yeah? Where are we using this? Oh, so you can see the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Yeah. So they say the price is too high. Sorry, I can't even tell them many of them. Yes, I'm yes. muted. Yeah. So by knowing your product very well and having enough knowledge, you can do many things for yourself and your customer. You can increase your sales, of course, and revenue. And you can actually bring your top range product. You can be the top range and stay as a benchmark in your industry. You can promote customer satisfaction. They're happy with you and they trust you because they know you know your product very, very well. You're reliable. You can be a consultant in that industry because you know your range very, very well. And you can also help them learn and grow and do better in their industry and support them. You become the, 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 the consultant. They know these guys, I mean, they know, them, they, know they, they know everything about this industry very, very well. So they come to you. So please learn your product, know everything you must know, but understand why you're unique and why you stand out. Two, three, four things. And communicate that in the simplest, most honest way. And stand by your price. And be proud of who you are. Don't shy away because at your expensive, yes, you are because of one, two, three things. We okay? Are we are we are we clear? 
Cukup sawa? Yes, we are sawa. Kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Kabisa sawa? Kabisa. I'm giving you a small, just about in, in 10 minutes time, I want to do a small thing for me here. Yeah, mm -hmm. in groups of uh, purity. Yes. How many are we now? We have increased. We are, we are almost 35. Yes, we are 35. Just do this four for me, yeah? Look okay. out your attributes of your products. Choose the ones you want to choose. And what's uniquely attribute? What is uniquely yours? And then translate very, very briefly that attribute to a benefit, yeah? Okay. And how you compare with others in the market there, with other attributes. Okay, so uh, just about five or set, four or so minutes, very few minutes. Time is running out. Are... You can share this with them. I don't know how they'll get to see. The other are... did not want to well. so okay. They can take a photo of the screen. Yes, but I, I can also share with them. Uh, so uh, it will be groups of eight or seven people. So uh, I'm opening the groups now. I hope you, you, all of us have seen what is required of us from the group work. Right? We'll say, let's say uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. OK. I've opened all the rooms now. Please join your rooms.
Hello. Joseph, you asked for help? Yeah, I joined to room two. I don't, I, there is nothing which is happening there. Am I, am I the one who is lost here? Uh, I, I okay. see the Stella. Stella. Okay. Stella and Tibebu. Hi, guys. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, Tibebu, I am here. Discussion now. I'm hearing. Okay. So you and Joseph need to start uh, like the discussion. Do we have the, the discussion questions? I've just sent them again to the to the chat box. Joseph, or alternatively, you can just do the assignment on your own, then we can present. Okay, uh, let me do so. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question. Yes, are we talking uh, about the competition uh, in general, or are we, are yeah, we talking are... about a specific? I think you're supposed to talk about attributes of our product. Sorry, attributes of our product. What uh, what products uh, stands out uh, more than the competitors' ones? And yeah, what... that's what I, that, that's what I'm saying. Okay, proceed. And 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 you know, I'm 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 arranging them. They were from from as in from the seeds to 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 the, to the finished product. Okay. Then uh, what are the what are the unique attributes? That, that, that that's that's what we, that's what we are talking about. Translate the attributes into benefit to the customer. Of course, of course, you talk about shelf life, about the fruit size, about the germination. Uh, it, it is it is value value for money high production it's, it's the customer benefiting how 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 do your competitor product compare with your product unique attributes and the benefits of course this one is just one in all Polly, Polly, are we together yes yes the outstanding features of our product as compared with the competition of course, so of you course, don't... Of course. Of course, what I talked about summarizes everything that I've that, that listed here. And, and unless someone wants to, to, to say something else. Sorry. What about maturity? Okay, we can we can we can talk about maturity. Uh, yeah, 
it is a uh, it's it's I did, of course we'll, you'll find most of them are in the same range, but uh, you'll find Ansel ma maturing rel relatively earlier, uh, relatively early maturity than the the rest because I know what I'm talking about. Uh, Esbon, what do you say about germination? I said uh, it, 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 it has good germination. The, the percentage of germination is high. The, the, the germination is uniform. Sorry, sorry, I'm in a place where it's very noisy now. Can you hear me? We can hear you clearly. OK. So that, 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 that is germination. The, the percentage of germination is high. The germination is uniform. Are we, are we sour, Pole? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so from there, unless someone, someone else wants to say something. I think you have covered almost everything. Yeah, I think it's uh, this is this is good. Mm. Uh, uh, some, 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 something I just forgot to, to, to mention to you is the, the, the seed counter. Uh, uh, may I ask us uh, the question? Uh, mm. What do you think about constant? improvement of our product uh, time and again i've seen uh, we, are, we are we are we are selling or we are, we are introducing uh, le let's say a seed and you're saying this one is uh, pest and disease uh, proof or maybe this is a drought drought proof or something like that or some we come with a different kind of uh, tomatoes uh, depending on different regions so can can we say that that is a constant improvement of our product because the same product that we sell we sold to to our, to our client last year is not the same that we are doing this year because uh, there is an improvement and it's continually growing. Again, I see we have a different kind of uh, let's say like tomatoes, right? We have yes. uh, a new, newly oh, improved version yeah, of we are, we are, we, uh, Vincent. Yeah. Uh, we have I'm 50 just seconds to go. Security. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can you say the, like a constant improvement of our the, product is an attitude? Hello? Purity. Esbon, yeah. can you say yes. that uh, constant improvement of our product? as an attribute, is an attribute that we improve every other time out of research, out of uh, whatever that we get in. That is a competitive that, attribute to our, our, that, our competitors. That is very true, but uh, we are talking about a product, a specific product here that is a seed. Eh? Okay. Uh, hi guys, we are back, right? Uh, from the group work. Yes. Uh, I hope we've we've done something <laughs> during the short time. Uh, Nancy, you'll want them to present. Yes, let's hear a few of the inputs. What they found out. All right. Well, any random group. Which group would like to go first? Time is running out very fast. We need to Can go. Yes, okay. Hesbon, please. Group one. 
we 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 were at the ground floor, Group One. Okay. <laughs> yes. So Nancy. Yes. We chose a a, a seed a product that we that we sell. Uh -huh. The name the name. The, the name of the seed is uh, Ansal F1. Okay. Should, I, should I go on? Yes, continue. Let's go on. Okay. So the Ansal F1, the, the, key, the key attributes, it, uh, it, it has uh, the, the place getting noisy, but bear with me. It has okay. very strong resistance to to bacteria and fusarium wilt. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's of course compared to competition. It has, a, it has a higher seed count per gram, for example, which is a, which is a plus to the farmer who is our main, uh, who is our end user customer. So it gives value for money in terms of buying the seed. Uh, the germination is good. Answer F one. When you transplant, uh, uh, at the time of production, it has it has very good setting of fruits, setting of flowers. It has very short internodes. It has a uh, it has a uh, many 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 fruits per cluster. Uh, by, 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 that, by that being the case, then it means it is high yield. The production is is high. When you harvest, you, you, you can harvest up to 400 crates, the, 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 these wooden boxes that we use, we use in this world of Kenya. Uh, up to 400 crates by the end of the, of, of the growing season. The fruits, they are have, uh, have very, 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 very firm. Which, which means the shelf life will be will, will, will be higher up to up to up to 21 days uh, as well as opposed to what the competition is offering of up to 10 days some can't last even two days uh, the the production per square area is very high that of course, that, that, that of course uh, I, I, I had mentioned. So when you compare the, the, the answer, if one is relatively, is relatively expensive compared to what the competition is offers, but because of the attributes I'm giving, you'll find that answer if one is now becoming a leading uh, tomato seed variety in this section of ours because, because of the quality that is packed inside it. I don't, I, I don't. I don't know if I if I have responded to, to all the the things I was to respond to. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was uh, Adati. Yes, Esbon. Esbon, thank you. Yes. Very well done, yes, uh, group. Now I like that you know the product very very well. You have about one, two, three, about five attributes. You yes. Said it is strong against bacteria. Bacterial and fusarium wilt. Which bacteria? Do they know the bacteria you're talking about? How many range of bacteria? We, we the, the, the ones that are known in, in the, all, all, all of them that are known in Kenya. Okay, you need to know to tell them. The we range. know, we know, we know. We are, sorry. It's also, you know yes. the rate of yes. bacteria. Yeah? You're assuming that me, I'm a farmer, I know all of them. Maybe I'm a new farmer. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe. Yes, I, I get you. <laughs> of what they are and what they can do to my to my crop. Yes. Eh? All right. It has high grammage per what per high seed per per gram. High seed high seed count per, per gram. What is the average? The average this is two hundred and fifty. Okay, yeah. So give the details, eh? Five hundred. Yes, give the details, and if you know what yes. they have. As compared to others who have maybe 200 and know what you're saying is correct for the computer, isn't All right. it? Yeah? All right. To give you, um, germination is very, very good. What does that mean? Good germination means Sorry? what? Good germination. It means what to uh, suffer? 
The minute one? Over, over 90%. Okay, so if you can give a figure or a number or, or quantify, make it mm. very clear. I want to know that that is based on numbers. Number of uh, yeah, right. know, number of machines that fight, you know. I want to be convinced. Shelf life is one day is very good compared to who else has how many days? Let them know. Mm -hmm. So give all the details. <laughs> Trust, I want benefit. I want more crop. I want more yield. I want more all things. Mm, That's yes. why I do the data. Yes. Well done. Good. Anybody else? Thank you. One more group? Yes. Uh, any other group that is ready to make the submissions? Yes, Johnston. You can go next. Yes. Uh, Hello. Hello. You can hear me? Yes. Yeah, we were, I think we were in room five. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we chose a, a seed variety. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a Neptune F1 is a variety for onions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we compared uh, again as our competition, mm -hmm. and uh, we gave uh, five good attitudes on Neptune. Mm -hmm. One of it, number one, uh, it has uh, an excellent germination percentage that is 90 to 95 percent. Mm -hmm. Number two, it is resistant to most of the onion's diseases. Number three, it has an extended shelf life after harvesting. That is between two, four to six months. Uh, number, number three uh, is of pocket friendly. That is, uh, if you compare to most of the onions, and that are in the same segments in the market, mm -hmm. we, are, we are friendly to most of our growers and farmers. And uh, number four, the other point was uh, the production rate was a bit higher compared to the other uh, competition. That is, in one acre, you can have your 10 to 15 tons. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are okay. Those are some of the good attributes. Yes. Thank you, thank okay. you, thank you, thank you Johnston. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that you're putting figures to your benefits, like your generation is ninety five percent. So it means I get what I get higher return. Yeah. Higher return. Higher yield, eh? Mm. Translate that to me. Yeah, I, I want, I want yeah if the germination is good. Uh-huh. I get higher returns, eh? Yeah, okay. if you have the excellent germination, yes. You can, most of this, it can resist most diseases. What are those most? Tell me what they are. What are the ones that are there for uh, the uh, One of, uh, we have the pink road. So give them out. I eh? think most of the agronomy they are they understand the pink so root. Tell them what they are, and is that like one major one that is very very infectious? Yeah. Onions, that one can it combat the major disease? If you have one, yeah, that, what? you can use that as a selling yes. say you can combat this disease and blah 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 go on like that. Uh, don't ever say pocket friendly. What? Who tells you they're pocket friendly? Don't talk about price now. Talk about them. Attributes, eh? Mm. Then yes, you can tell me the price later. So all these will go for a price of that, that, that. So never uh, try to bring price as you discuss the key attributes. First, give me what is of value to me. Yeah, what I need to know about that product. Yes, the value I get against others. Eh? Then price is discussed separately. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. But, but, but well done. 
Okay, I think as of time now, I'm sure you all have your very nice uh, feedback. I wish you had more time. Maybe you mm -hmm. can share them on a different, uh, on, a, on, a, on a Word document and share with Purity. Mm -hmm. You can see them later because of time. Yeah. Yes, but that's I think, okay. But I appreciate the topic that we have just done now. It's very, very key. And we have one more topic that we have to rush through. I think two hours are, are very brief. So I'll, I'll ask you for some more time to just go through it. That we have called Know Your Customer. But why know your customer? What do you want to know about your customer? What do you want to understand about them? So when you say uh, know your customer, or the KYC as we know it, is to understand the deal between the favorable ones and then the favorable customers. They're different kinds. They're those who are favorable for you as a salesperson or as a business, and those are not favorable for you. So you want to understand if they're favorable for you, how long they'll be with you, can they transact with trust, can they transact with credibility, can they damage your, your, your business as you interact with them, and those who are not, how high risk are they, you know, are they so high risk they are unethical, are they criminally connected, what's their history as a company, and why should you avoid them or why should you pursue them. Because sometimes you come with, you find customers coming to you, they want an account open very, very quickly. They have all the right papers. They're very good. Everything is fine. After three or four months, they have collapsed or they have closed shop and they have gone with your money. So knowing starts with understanding who are the high risk, who are the low risk, and what kind of benefit you want from each and how you will tackle each category. But mostly here you would say, you want the ones that are low risk because you won't interact without having too much hardship, your money be paid well, you won't have illegality issues around them, and they're not badly, you know, sometimes they can drag your name, your good name in trouble with them because they have a criminal record. Mm -hmm. They'll be dealing with, mm -hmm. run, they deal with other people like those ones. So you want to have a clean plate with them, and it is very, very critical that you start well with them, okay? Now, most companies find it very, very hard when they come to start uh, vetting customers, knowing who the customers are, because they want to rush into business and start getting results without understanding who they are dealing with. And customers come very, very nicely. They talk to you very, very well, present their big names, present their big cards, and they can do very, very well for the first few months, but then later, they can damage you very, very badly. So what you want to know is, first of all, the business type, what are they into? They say they are farming company, they are flower companies. Okay, that's their type. The size and the nature of the transactions, okay? Are they transacting the hundred billions, the millions? Okay, who do they deal with? Who are their main customers? Who are their, you know, who are their references? Can you find a good reference to say something good about them? What is the source of their wealth or their funds? Is it just flowers or flowers are up front? Do they have other wealth sources? Because you can have one custom, one, uh, one business name, but there are others connected and they're giving them the wealth, okay? And where do they want to come to you? They want to buy maybe just the seeds. They want to come for only the irrigation schemes. So what do they want to have as a dealing with you? What is the scope of their transaction and the range? And also how much do they want of credit if they want credit, can you afford to have them? The length of time, the frequency, and how often they buy, and what they're buying. Those are very key elements, yeah? You want to know, are they being truthful in who they say they are, where they say their funds are coming from, and the activities beyond what they say they do? Who are directors in that company? Who are the key people? How do they perform in the past with other client, other suppliers? You know, again, now, of course, you must go referencing and finding out more about them. Um, are you able to follow up any ethical practices with them? Do they have any bad record? So then I want to go deeper and investigate further. Yeah. How long have they been in business? How long have they been there in that business or in whatever they say they do on that location? And who do they supply to? So find as much as you can about every prospective customer before you engage them. Don't be in a rush, right? So we look at particular areas of the ID, who they are, the documents as, as they as, as they have. Uh, they call what company um, business documents? Yeah? Can they be verifiable? 
Are they, are they being vetted? Are they being checked with authorities? Uh, are they in any other illegal business like money laundering or illegal dealings? Here you may have to investigate and find a higher investigator because sometimes some things are not very, very straightforward. You want to go deeper if you're not sure. If they appear in that kind of high risk, you want to go and do something called enhanced due diligence. Because you're, you're expecting, you're seeing so far, these are high risk, but before I get deeper, let me know a bit more about them and see if they can be pretty well for me to have as a customer, as a, as a supplier. So get deeper, investigate as far as you can, don't be in a rush, put them in one category and see the high risk ones. Before you engage them, let's go through this vetting process and have something in place for vetting, parameters you want to investigate with. What level, you know, are they high risk? Defaulting level, yeah? Who are their bankers? Can they vet for them? Who are their suppliers? Who are their other partners? Who are their directors? What else do they do, directors? Other things they do, are they employed? Are they other businesses? Are they legal? So get deeper and get to do the very, very enhanced due diligence. Now, as you're gathering all this info, it's good to find the red flags and point out with these red flags we have found out, should we really be in the business with them at all or not? If they get lower risk and they're asking for maybe about uh, 90 days any limit, can we say 90 or make it 60 days? If they're asking for 50 million, can we make it lower at the beginning, so like 10 million for the first two months? So do some very, very serious investigation here to understand because they come to you, they want to buy, they want to trade. Maybe they are being very, very honest and transparent, but something somewhere can go wrong, yeah? You want to be assured and secure in a long-term business with them, right? And also find, there are many softwares you can find for knowing compliance framework customers. They are there, they're available in different industries. Yeah, those are for banks, for insurances, and even for yourselves, you can find those who you can, you can, you can interrogate with in, uh, in your sector. So it takes time and effort and a keenness to and find out who your customers are and why they want to come to you and go deep and find a checklist like this one. Everything about them, their VAT numbers, their addresses, their everything number, their branch numbers, their bank numbers, all, anybody who is close to them at all, anybody who knows them, investigate. And if it gets too risky for you, you can decide and say, for now, sorry, we can't give you any business. You can only buy on cash basis and then follow up and see if they can really warrant for an account. Pursue them, follow up, yeah? Do a lot of due diligence because KYC can be very, very uh, deceiving. You can think, oh, so far they're okay, but let's give an account, 50 million, adds a bit more, and then something goes wrong somewhere, a scandal appears and you're dragged with them and your money goes down with them as well. So always be very, very, very keen and verify, verify, vet everything about them, follow up, take your time, know the people who are behind them, the directors, their family sometimes, understand everything about them. Because once you have signed that contract of supply or whatever it is, account opening form, you have sealed yourself to an agreement. And coming out, despite all that account can go wrong, can be very, very, very expensive. So be careful. I'm not sure how you do it at where your place of work where you are. I don't know how you how you vet your clients, but due diligence as the days go by, as we are seeing, it gets more serious. Investigate, find out, inquire, and find uh, the ones who are favorable for your business to grow with them. And those will not bring you down. And that's what I can say about KYC. Know your customer. And there's any questions. We have come a long way. It's now 4.30. I don't want to keep you for long. I want you to yeah, go for yeah. your Friday outings before the curfew. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have, um, we, we have understood uh, what we discussed today. We have appreciated some things we have discussed. And I hope they find them valuable for your, for your business and your career as you go along, as you practice your sales. And I'm sure we'll see some good results if you apply. If Definitely. you apply principles yeah thank you for your attention and for your participation i'm glad to have met you and i think i'll see you on wednesday yes it's wednesday at two to four for the next topic yes yeah unless there are any queries or burning questions or comments uh husband please
uh, I just want uh, I just want to her to, to ask Nancy to help me. Yes. Uh, say that uh, we people in the field can be can be clients to or customers to people in the in the office. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so the time it will take to respond to us and the way they talk to us, uh, maybe Nancy can 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 design a topic for that sometime. For internal customers. Yes. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's different also, than what you asked yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the communication and uh, empathy. Yes. We, talk, we talked about people being in others' shoes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, noted. Thank you. We, we design with purity. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you for <laughs> that. Uh, any other feedback, question, comments? Okay, uh, I'll assume there is none. Uh, we'll have to, to share with you uh, the assessments. Last week, we did not get much of feedback uh, from the assessments that we shared, but I hope you are able to share with us feedback. And uh, I hope you are learning something as we continue. I really hope so. And, and, and just feel free to give us as much feedback as you can, you know, because it will not only help us design the program better for you, but also you get your, your, your feel on, 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 on how we are doing things. So thank you so much, Nancy. A very wonderful afternoon we have spent uh, with the team from Amiran. My sincere apologies, I was not able to join on time, but I joined almost like an hour later but I've really gotten much from, from where I was able to join. So uh, as, as Nancy has mentioned, and I'll want to, to repeat it again in the forum, uh, we have moved the Tuesday session to Wednesday. So from Tuesday to Wednesday at two to five, uh, no, two to 4 p.m. So let's see all of us on Wednesday, uh, but make sure you, you leave us your feedback as we go. Uh, other than that, I'll share the presentation Nancy has just uh, uh, used to train us on this session. So thank you so much. Have a very wonderful Friday evening, a very wonderful weekend ahead of us. Uh, God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Sunday. Sunday morning. <laughs>